All right, questions for Marcus? Start with John Corrales. Hey Marcus, uh, how does it feel being back out there? How's the calf and, and when do you think you'll be ready to go? Um, felt great. You know, uh, today was my uh, my first day to really get out there and play five on five and um, contact and, and, and really press it to the limit to see. Felt really good. Um, it was hard to really do stuff over the break, um, five on five and stuff like that. So to, like I said, today was the first day, it felt great. So um, they cleared me and said, you know, if, if today went well, um, I'm probably most likely going to play um, tomorrow unless something changes. But as of right now, I'm, I will be playing and attending the game tomorrow. Keith Smith. Hey, Marcus. Uh, while you've been out, the, the team has struggled some defensively. How hard is that for you to see that end of the floor be a problem and not be able to help? Um, I think for anybody, you know, that's sitting on the sideline, um, you know, because of an injury or something that, you know, that they can't control that stops them from playing to look at, um, especially when you know how good of a defensive team we can be, that we are, and, you know, how we, we, we come in and play against each other and practice every day and prepare. Um, and then especially for me, being a defensive guy, you know, it really is tough, you know, but uh, being able to sit over there, I have to, you know, look at it a different perspective, you know, when everybody else is looking at the negatives about it, I'm looking at the positives the things that we can control and fix that are very fixable and controllable. And, uh, you know, um, what I have to do to bring back that energy on that defensive end for us. David Aldridge. Hey, Marcus. Um, tomorrow is a year since the league first shut down. Just, it, I don't know if there's any way that you can kind of summarize what these last 12 months have been like, just to kind of deal with on the court, off the court. Um, just, you know, like, what do you miss the most about what the, the old normal and what have you gotten used to with the new normal, I guess? Um, unfortunately, you know, uh, uh, for me, and I think I can speak for, for, for almost everybody, uh, at least on this team and, and every player that's playing in the NBA, um, the fans, you know, we miss that fan uh, interaction, you know, being able to go into a crowded gym, a crowded arena, and, you know, you feel that presence when you walk in, the, the jitters that you get that excitement that you get from uh, from those fans um, being able to play in front of those. And, and on the back end, we've also got used to not playing with them. Um, and, you know, it's tough. It really is. You know, they try to bring in and do as much as they can to, to replicate the fans with the, you know, the, the fake noise and the automatic, uh, automated uh, electronic noises and things like that from the fans. But it's just not the same. Um, but we, we, we happen to get used to it. And, and this year, and, and um, for us, it's just been big, big time curveball. You know, and unfortunately, it's something that we have to deal with. Um, but, you know, the NBA has done a great job of, you know, uh, protecting us uh, and trying to do their best to protect us uh, on and off the court and trying to keep us, you know, um, as, as normalized as we can. So um, definitely something that uh, I think we, we would love to get back to as the fans. It's something that we miss, but it's also something we have definitely got used to. Adam Hemelsbach. Hey, Marcus, I know you said you couldn't play five on five really over the break, but what? kind of things we were able to do and how helpful was it to have this last week kind of away from the games to just uh, focus on yourself and, and also with this injury sometimes there can be a, a risk of recurrence how are you able to kind of put that aside mentally and and you know when you take those steps not think about this and not think about your calf and just play the way you know how to play um you know it has been tough um not being able to play five five so you know the things we've been doing is you know i've been playing um against the coach, like uh, my player coach here, um, just one-on-one, um, um, trying their best to, to put me in positions, game-like positions to, to, to get ready. Been doing a lot of calf raises and strengthening the calf and uh, just really working on everything else to make sure that the rest of my body isn't compensating because of the calf and making sure that, you know, I continue to stay strong um, on both, not just my left calf, but the right one as well and the rest of my body. Um, and to have this, this this last week to myself to really, you know, get away from the team and, and focus on it has been huge. You know, it's extra rest that I get, extra extra rehab and, and extra strengthening that I get to do for the cat. Um, and as far as, you know, not worrying about it, um, for me, it's always been like that, you know, any type of injury I have. You know, when you go in thinking about it and, and worrying about it, even though I, I understand, you know, the, 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 the repercussions that I have are probably, you know, um, the reoccurrence of it, 
Um, but you can't think like that, you know, um, because once you start thinking like that, you start allowing that negativity to get in that doubt and, and, and things start going wrong for you. You know, you have to trust your body. You have to trust the work that you're doing and uh, just go out there and do it, you know, and uh, and just play. You know, everything will work this stuff out. Jared Weiss. Marcus, every player says that they want to play hard on defense and play consistently. But every time you've gone down in your career, the team has kind of struggled to maintain that intensity level and that consistency. So when you're on the sideline, how are like what are you saying to your teammates to try to help them kind of take on the mentality that you take on? I'm just challenging, you know, um, anything I can to motivate them. You know, as competitors, you hate when guys call you out. You hate when guys tell you, you know, um, for us, it's really, you know, somebody, you know, got at your guard and busting your butt or he has this many points on you or this or that. Um, you know, as competitors, you hate to hear that. And, you know, hopefully that gives the motivation to go out there and, and try to lock down on the defensive end. You know, we're not going to say that everybody's going to go out there and be defensive player of the year. Um, but, you know, we just want to see everybody go out there and give the effort to give us a chance, you know. And when you play with effort and all five guys on the court are playing with effort, you know, it makes things a little bit easier on that defensive end to play and to get up. Um, but defense isn't easy. You know, that's why it's not a lot of people that can do it. That's why you don't see a lot of 3 and D players in this league. Um, because it's not easy. It's hard. It's hard to, to, to sit down in this thing 15 seconds, 20 seconds and guard the best players in the world. And, uh, you know, it takes a, a special person to do it. But it takes a really, 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 really person that has the will and wants to. You know, um, like I said, not it's not easy. Not everybody can do it, but everybody couldn't do it if they put their mind to it and put the effort in. <clears throat> Amanda Flugrad. Hey, Marcus, you mentioned that effort. And now that you are back with the team, what are you wanting to see from this Celtics group and, and focus on for the second half of the season? Um, you know, I just want us to forget about that first half, you know, in the sense of, you know, forget forget how we play. You know, that, that's it. When the pass is over, we get a fresh start in the second half. And we, we control the narrative. You know, we come out, we get, like I said, an opportunity to come out and start fresh. Um, with the defense and, and, and kind of reinvent ourselves and identity-wise on that defensive end. And I just want to see my guys, you know, play with the same intensity I have. I'm not saying you have to go out there and play the exact way I do. Just the, the, <clears throat> excuse me, just the same intensity. That's all I ask for. And I think that's all this coaching staff asked for because, you know, when, when all five, five guys are on the court and all 16, 17 guys are playing with that intensity when they're on the court, um, you know, it makes a difference. You know, this is a team, it's a team game. So, you know, if, if one guy is not doing what they're supposed to be doing, especially on the defensive end, it, it breaks down. So, you know, um, it, we all work together. We're all we're all tied to a string. So when one guy does something intensity-wise, everybody has to pick up on it and keep it going to continue to, to strive and, and become the defensive team that we know we can be, that we want to be, and that we should be. Dan Roche. Hey, Marcus. Uh, glad to hear you're feeling better. Uh, you were asked a little bit ago about, you know, the one year anniversary of the shutdown and what have you, you, if anyone can really, uh, you know, look back on this and say, wow, what you went through is maybe, uh, you know, kinds of shows everybody what they can go through. What has this year been like for you as you look back on it? How strange has it been? And, and what will you learn from it on the other side? Um, it's been a whirlwind. It's been a tornado type of type of year for us, you know, um, uh, not knowing if we can get in the gym at a certain time because we have to test or test didn't come back or waiting on test or, okay, you can't get in because somebody tested positive or somebody was around somebody protocol or just all kinds of things that you have to worry about that, that in previous years you never have to worry about. Um, and, you know, and that's for everybody. So it's definitely been a, a tornado type of season for us this, this last year. And, uh, you know, but it allows us to, to sit back and really be thankful and, and really be aware of what's more important than just basketball. You know, we kind of get caught up as athletes into our sport, into our profession, and we forget about other things that are more important than, than, off, than on the court. Um, and that's, you know, your family, you know, um, social injustice, making sure that, you know, everybody has the same equal rights and things like that. Gary Washburn. Hey, Marcus, it's one thing to, to sit out a month. You, you missed time before before the pandemic because you could go out, you could see your family, you could maybe travel back to Texas. You could do a lot of things when you were injured. But now you had a month of like staying at home probably and just rehabbing. What was that month like? Did you pick up a hobby? Did you read a, some books? What did you do the past time? Because you weren't always on the road with the team. What's this past month been like off the floor? 
For me, you know, it's been great. You know, I got to spend more time with, with my family here in Boston at home. You know, I got a, a new puppy. Um, so, you know, I'm a new puppy, a, a, new, a new dog dad as well. I got two dogs now. So, you know, it's just really spending time with, with my family and things like that. And, you know, um, doing the things that I love to do, taking time to myself during the season, usually, uh, you know, um, when everything was back to normal, it was, um, it was hectic, even, even, even when you were hurt. You know, you still had things you had to do and, and prior arrangements that you, you had to uh, adjust to. You know, it's tough because now you can't go to a meeting or, or go do, um, <clears throat> excuse me, a, um, a clinic or something like that that you might possibly have done when, you know, when everything was normal. Um, you have a little bit more time to yourself. So, you know, you get the more self-reflect. Self and uh, like I said, focus on the things that are more important um, than, than just on the court spots. Final two questions for Marcus. We'll go to Tim Bontemps. Hey, Marcus, you, you talked a bunch about uh, wanting to see your teammates play with the same intensity as you do. Obviously, um, that's a big part of your game. But as you watched the past few weeks when the team, when you weren't on the court, is that the biggest thing that you saw that was missing? And if, if not, like, what did you see from the team as it kind of had an up and down few weeks without you? Um, yeah, you know, I think, I think uh, many factors went into – into you know our downfall, especially on that defensive end. You know, um, fatigue for one. You know, um, not not having all the players. You know, I think for us, our starting group, me, Kemba, Jason, and Jalen, only played, I think, uh, 28 minutes together total <laughs> over the whole course of the uh, season. So, you know, uh, this season took a lot of uh, bumps and bruises for us. You know, Jason was out with COVID. Um, JB was out with the protocol. I'm out with my injury. Kemba. With his injury, Romeo Langford still out with it, with his um, his wrist just now coming back and things like that. So, um, there's a lot of factors into it, um, but <clears throat> that's still no excuse for the, for for you to go out there and, and give the effort. And I think uh, these guys know it. Um, I think they feel it, they understand it. Um, but like I said, you know, it's a lot of factors that go into it, and and uh, at least we have the second half of the season to make up for it. Final question, Brian Rob. Hey, Marcus. Um... First off, for how do you feel like your conditioning is at at this point? I know, obviously, a calf injury is probably a tough thing for you to, you know, be where you want to be at from that standpoint. So do you think you'll be on a, a minute's limit to start on that front? And then also, um, how did Romeo look to you? I think he, he was supposed to practice today. How does it look for having him back on the court with you guys? Um, definitely. You know, it was definitely tough with the calf injury to, to definitely, you know, try to, to replicate the conditioning level for in-game. Um, you know, I, I definitely will be on a minute restriction uh, <clears throat> of starting off to come back and just, you know, easing myself into it and, and to make sure we're taking all the right precautions to, to make sure that this doesn't happen again, um, uh, which is expected for my win to be down a little bit, uh, you know, but being able to get into these games and get back into game shape by playing in the games will help. And with Romeo, you know, he's been looking great. You know, he's been putting in the work here day in, day out, you know, and I know it sucks. You know, it's been, what, six months since he played and been able to practice with us and, and things like that. You know, that's tough, especially when he's the only one in the gym having to work by himself, seeing everybody else working together and doing things like that. But, you know, he's dedicated himself to the work, and uh, I think it's going to show off for him. All right, thanks for the time, Marcus. We'll wrap it up right there. Thank you, guys.